guys get to hear the first official message from Reverend Danielle Dean Crow. Okay. <laughs> I did say that, didn't I? 
Well, the first thing I notice when I read this here is, well, pardon me, I'll just be honest with you. Eve is talking to a snake. Okay, that's the first thing I notice. Now, I don't know about you, but I am not a snake fan. Um, they bite. <laughs> they do that creepy slithery thing, <laughs> you know. So, Eve, I mean, if I had a snake in my living room, I would, you know, go to the hotel. <laughs> I would not deal with it, you know. So, the first thing we notice is that Eve is talking to a snake, and she's not running around screaming like a girl, like I would be, okay? So, that's the first thing that I notice. And you know what, it tells me a little bit about the Garden of Eden. It says that he was one of the wild animals. And I think about the Garden of Eden, I know I always thought it just, you know, had puppies and kitties in it <laughs> because it was a wonderful, safe place to be, right? Um, it was a wonderful, safe place to be, but there were wild animals in the garden. And it makes me <coughs> take a look at why Eve is not all freaked out about the snake, <laughs> you know? Why isn't she freaked out? Well, because the garden was a place of comfort and safety and security. There was no fear. They were under God's protection, and they never had any inkling in their life that something bad could happen. The second thing I noticed is that, well, the snake is talking to Eve, okay? First she's talking to the snake, and I'm like, well, he's talking to her. And I don't know, there isn't any other record in the Bible of an animal talking except for Baal's donkey, I think, and that was a whole different story. Um, <laughs> but in general, there weren't really animals talking to Adam and Eve in the garden, okay? So, and I don't know if this is what made Eve go, huh, <laughs> you know, this not interesting. This snake is talking to me. And it, you know, got her attention. But we know the story. We just read it. The snake is Satan. Satan gets Eve to doubt God, and therefore she takes part in the fruit, and then she gives it to her husband, and he eats the fruit. And it says, both their eyes were open. You see, Adam and Eve were made in the likeness of God. They were his image, they were a representation of God, but they were not God. And up until this point, their eyes have only ever been on God. They've only looked to God. They've only looked at God. And then this sin comes into their lives. And what do they do? Well, the first thing they do is they look at themselves. And they see their nakedness. Now, it's not just their nakedness. Okay? They live in a place full of wild animals. Okay? <laughs> they see their vulnerability. They become aware that they can feel pain, that they could be hurt. They're aware of their regret and their shame. And they know that there's danger around them. So what do they do? After they look at themselves and they realize they are completely unprepared for what's going on around them, they pick up some fig leaves and they sew some armor on, right? <laughs> And actually, the word in the original is called kegor. And kegor is a word that they would use for a belt or an apron or armor. So I think about it. Wow, Adam and Eve, they looked at fig leaves and they saw armor. <laughs> I don't know about you, but we are not, you know, equipping the Marines with fig leaves, are we? <laughs> no. But they saw what they could do and what they could make. And they made themselves armor. They thought this was going to protect them. That was the reason why they did it. Because they somehow fell out from under God's protection because of the sin. Because of the death. Because of the sin. But see, this is what we do. And I just want to explain this a little bit further. You see, when things happen in our lives, when we are involved in sin, and you know what? We live in a sinful world. Sometimes sin is thrust upon us. It touches our lives. And sometimes we are hurt, and we feel pain, and we have regret, and we have loss, and we have a tendency to look at ourselves and try to make some armor. 
You know, that is what we do. And I, you know, I speak from my own experience. I have done this in my life. And I'm going to tell you a little bit more about that later on. But here we have Adam and Eve in their awesome fig leaf armor. <laughs> and up until this point, we're saying, you know, do not do what Adam and Eve did, right? We're all like, do not do that. Do not doubt God. Do not um, sin. Do not go against what God tells you to do. Do not, do not, do not, do not. But you know what? I think up, at, up until this point, it's like, yeah, do that. Because this is what happens. I'm going to read it again. <laughs> Verse 9. But the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, so I hid. And this is where it blows me away. God, thank you, Lord. God, he saved us. Okay, he could have burned up the garden right then and there and said, these guys, no good, let's start over. <laughs> I don't know, I probably would have done that. <laughs> but he loved us. He was fully <coughs> invested in our lives at that point. And he knew, even beyond our sin, he was not going to give up on us. And so he came to the garden and they heard him. And the first thing Adam does is he hears God. He hears God. The second thing Adam does is he answers God. He's like, where are you? And I can see Adam like behind the tree going, I'm here, I'm here. And then he is so honest with God. I heard you. I was afraid because I'm naked. So I hid. Three things. Three things that we should do that Adam did. Now, of course, God is just and sin has to be punished. He goes on and he punishes Satan. He punishes Eve. He punishes Adam. But then he provides. The beauty of what he provides is in verse 21. It says, The Lord God made garments of skin for Adam and his wife, and he clothed them. You see, he made a proper covering for their lives. You see, this is this fig leaf thing. This isn't going to work. It's not enough. It's not going to protect you enough. There are wild animals out there, and God sacrificed an animal for the first time. There was bloodshed for that sin. And then he covered them. Took off those fig leaves and he said, no, 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 don't wear that. What you wanted to make, it's not good enough. But this, I love you so much. I'm going to make something that is good enough for you. And you see, the perfect armor, Jesus is our once and for all sacrifice. And that is really what a picture of this is. Ever since there was sin, somebody had to die for sin, and it started right there with those animals. And it finished with Jesus Christ on the cross. Amen. He is our once and for all sacrifice. And this is our picture of salvation. We can wear the robe of righteousness and we can live like God had intended Adam and Eve to live in the garden. We can live free from fear. We can live free and secure in the knowledge of Christ if we come to him. But let me just say, this isn't our nature to cover ourselves up, isn't it? <laughs> so, so, so many of us as Christians, and I know a lot of us here are Christians, because I know a lot of you. Um, so many of us are Christians, and, you know, we wear a robe of righteousness, but, you know, something happens in our lives, and we feel a little bit of pain, and we feel a little bit uncomfortable, and somebody betrays us, or we feel abandoned, or and any numerous things, but we, instead of looking at him, we look at ourselves, and we thought, oh, what am I going to do about this? I am vulnerable, and I feel hurt, and I feel pain, and so um, we start looking around for fig leaves, <laughs> And we want to armor up. Well, how does that look over our robe of righteousness? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. But you know, when we do that, it steals what God intended from our lives. It keeps us from living the life that we are entitled to in Christ. You see, joy isn't any more like happiness than thriving is like 
surviving. Joy? Joy is what Eve and Adam had before the apple. You see, they were in a wilderness, okay, with wild animals and snakes that talk. <laughs> they were there. And they were at peace. They had everything that they needed in this garden. And they had joy. But you know, they gave up that joy for that split second of happiness. I'm sure that fruit, whatever it was, tasted pretty darn good. <laughs> I'm sure it did. But once it was gone, they were left with their nakedness. And see, thriving, thriving is when every part of your body is fed and nourished and is doing its best. It is more than it is before. And surviving is just, well, it's just not dying. That's all surviving is. And see, Adam and Eve, they went from thriving to surviving. But Christ invites us today to take a part of what he did on the cross. And we don't need to give up the joy. We can live in the joy and we can thrive in our lives and in our circumstances. You know, a fig leaf when you wear it for a really long time, let me tell you, it gets heavy, <laughs> and it gets tighter, and you know, I don't know why God wanted me to share this story, because trust me, I have gone to God with a lot of fig leaves on me, <laughs> and I've been like, yeah, and he's like, oh, let me fix you up, honey. Okay, so <laughs> that is, in my life, this is the story God wanted me to share, so, so I'm going to share it, and I don't know, but I, I figure that there's someone or many of you that maybe this will resonate with. But I wore this fig leaf for a really, really long time. And it did. It became very heavy. It became like a ball and chain in my life. And it, it took away all of my joy and all of my freedom. So when I was nine years old, my brother and I were at school. And we were waiting to hear news about my mom and dad having a baby. We were going to have a little brother or sister. So we were in school, and we hear our names over the loudspeaker. Eric and Danielle Fisher, that was my name. <laughs> Can you please come down to the office? So we both got down to the office, and the lady was so sweet, she waited until we all got there. We both got there. So we get there, and she's like, congratulations. You have a little brother. And my brother went, woo! And I went, oh, shoot. <laughs> it's because I wanted a little sister, because I already had a big brother, <laughs> you know? And those were, that's what came out of my mouth, and that's what I said. But I didn't know. I didn't know that 10 days later he would die. I didn't know that. I mean, I was nine, and I was just out of my mouth, but was in my heart. Shoot. And I remember being in the hospital room when the doctors came in and were talking to my mom and my dad. They said, they were telling them that my brother had passed away. And I remember I made a promise to myself. You see, I didn't know I would never have the opportunity to take those words back. I would never have the opportunity to say, you know, I love you, it's okay that you're my brother. I love you and I embrace you. I didn't get that opportunity. And I promised myself that I would never say something that I would never have an opportunity to take back if I could. And I know on the, on the onset that seems okay. Well, let me tell you, it's not okay. Because it affected my life because <laughs> that big leaf got harder <laughs> and heavier. And I spent a long time being learning to be a good listener because I didn't really express what I was thinking or what I was feeling. And when my husband and I got married, you know what I'm going to say. <laughs> my husband and I got married, um, you know, when you first get married, you do things differently. He puts the cups right side up, I put them upside down in the closet. Um, <laughs> you know, you have all these things that you got to work out. And, and, well, let me just say, there were some things bothering me. 
But I could never tell him. Never. I could never tell him. How about it? I could never hide it. There was something bothering me. Oh, yeah. But I could never tell him because that fear in my heart, I would literally think, if I told him and he got upset with me, and what if he drove off in the car and there was a car accident and he never came back and I never had an opportunity. I can't bear the thought of that. And he would say to me, just say one word. What's the first word? I was going to say, what's the first word of that spot? Just tell me the first word and we'll figure the rest out. I couldn't. It was like literalizing, literally paralyzing for me. I loved him so much. I did not want to live that regret again. And I had made that promise to myself. But I knew if I continued down this road, this was not going to be a good path for our marriage. I knew it was going to be a problem. Eventually I had to learn to express what I was feeling. And I, I went to the Lord and I said, God, I just don't want to ever feel that way again. You see, I did what Adam, I did what Adam did. I heard him speaking to me. He's like, Danielle, you can't live this way anymore. And so I answered. I said, Oh yeah. Well, I, I don't ever want to feel that regret again. I don't ever want to feel that pain again. And I said, God, I am so sorry. You know what? It's insufficient. It's not good enough. Let me tell you, when I wore that fig leaf, I had no peace in my heart. None at all. I was completely stressed out. I was completely worried. I was... I had no control, but I tried to have it all. And see, when we live that way, we, we do kind of look a bit hypocritical to the world, too. You know, they're like, oh, you say you're a Christian, but... You know, you don't care about people. Because, you know, see, we, see, that's one of our fig leaves. Sometimes, you know, it's, I don't really care what people think about me. Right? Anybody ever said that before? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I don't really care. You know, that doesn't bother me. You know, chances are if you say that, you know darn well it is really bothering you, right? <laughs> I mean, let's just be honest. God knows it's bothering you anyways, you know. You just got to him and say, you know, yeah, it's, I don't want it to bother you, but darn it, it does. It bothers me. Just like Adam, you hear him, you answer him, and then you are completely honest with God, and he will take that thing that you put on yourself, that you've been trying to walk around with to survive in this world, to get away from the hurt, to get away from the pain. He will take that off, and he will clothe you with something so marvelous, so wonderful, so enduring, better than anything else, because it will be the blood of Jesus Christ in your life, and you can live free from all of that pain. Yeah, there'll be pain around you, but you are not going to feel it. You're going to be free from all of that. And that's what God wants from us. Adam and Eve were in the garden around wild animals. And they had no fear. They had peace. They had security. And we can have that 
right here and right now. We don't have to wait till we get to heaven. God had made it. God made a plan through Jesus Christ that we can live in that right now. And that, that is my desire for you. Just as, you know, okay, I'm sure I still got a big leaf here or there. <laughs> you know? I think we all do. But the important thing is, nothing gets between us and God. You know, you just go to Him and you're honest with Him and He will take care of it. So I don't know, I don't know what your fig leaf is. I mean, sometimes it's alcohol. We try to cover ourselves up with something to get rid of the pain. It could be drugs. It could be anger. Anger's a really good fig leaf. You just put that on and you just get angry. Nobody messes with you anymore, right? <laughs> Anger's a good one. Apathy. Boy, God does not want us walking through this world not caring about people around us, but boy. When we've been hurt so many times, the first thing we want to do is just try not to care anymore. Even arrogance, indifference, and regret, like I had for a long time, that regret, and unforgiveness, sometimes towards others, and for me in that case, it, it was towards myself. But you know, today is a day of healing. This is just something, this is the beginning. Let me tell you, there's no magic like, oh, there we go. There, here, take my fig leaf. No. God takes it off in his way, and in a way that allows you to be free. It doesn't hurt you. It's in a comfortable way for you. So today is just the beginning. Today is like, yeah, God, I hear you, and this is where I'm at. We're just going to pray here for a moment. If you would bow your head and close your eyes. I know I know a lot of you here, but I, I don't know all of you. And I just want to see, I want to ask, I don't want to ever not give an opportunity. If there's anyone here who has never known what it felt like to wear that robe of righteousness. If there's someone here who has been where Adam was and is still hiding behind their sin and they have not come to Christ, they have not asked for forgiveness, and you don't know what's going to happen in your life because let me tell you, the fig leaf you're carrying it is not going to make you through this life. But what Christ offers, what God offers through Jesus Christ, it is sufficient. It is proper. And it is exactly what you need. And if you're here tonight and you've been listening to this message and you hear God and you just want to say, God, yeah, I'm here. I want to come to you for the first time. I just want you to raise your hand and let the Lord know, just like Adam did, just raise your hand and say, I'm here. And if you're here tonight and you... I listen to this message and you can look down at yourself and say, ooh, I think I got a few fig leaves on there. You know, I've, I've been hurt. Maybe you've got some of the regret that I had in my life. Some things you can't take back. I wish you could. But God can make it right. And you look down at yourself and you want to do like Adam did and lift your hand and say, I'm here, God. Then to respond to it. Just raise your hand and say, God, I'm here. Say, God, I'm here. Take this big leaf off of me. Thank you, Jesus. So you've answered God, and I just want to want to give a couple minutes here. Because you know, Adam took time to be honest with God. He spelled out the whole story. This is what I'm feeling. And I want to give you a few moments and you can say it to yourself. You can say it out loud. It doesn't really matter to me. It just matters to God. And I want you to just be honest with God right now about those things that you're carrying in your life, that protection, that armor that you've tried to put on yourself, why you put it there, what it made you feel. And then I want you to ask Him to take it from you. I'll give you a few moments.
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, that you're removing this fig leaf from our life, this armor that we've placed on ourselves. Father, thank you so much. Oh, Lord, it is not sufficient. This thing that I've placed on myself, that we've placed on ourselves, it not only doesn't belong there, it doesn't even do any good. It just all this hard, Father. We don't want it in our lives, and we want you to take it from us, Lord. But in the taking, you don't leave us bare. Now you cover us. You provide that robe of righteousness, that, that covering that allows us to walk through this life like Adam and Eve did in the garden before sin. Allows us to walk that way that those things that are around us will not harm us. That we can have security and safety in you and knowing whose we are. We are your children that you love. And we thank you for that. Father, I just pray that you would bless the people that are here this evening. That, Lord, as this time goes on, I know some of them I won't see for a really long time, but, Father, that we would become acutely aware of those things in our lives before we even put them on. Lord, we would just let them go and cover you first. Wouldn't it have been better if Adam and Eve had done that? And it's so much better for us if we do. So, Lord, I just pray that you would be with them, that you would bless them, that you would keep them, that, Father, you would use them in mighty ways, that your anointing would be upon them in their lives. Father, I love you. Father, we praise you for your gloriousness. We thank you that you did not destroy us in the garden so many years ago, but you continue to give forgiveness to us, Father. In your precious name we pray. Amen. If anyone wants to come to the altar, I want you to know that it's always open. You know what? Don't ever. I say this from the bottom of my heart. Don't ever. Let anything come between you and doing what you hear God telling you to do. Don't ever. And if that means you drop to your knees right now, you drop to your knees. If that means you come to the altar, you come to your altar. If that means you get up at 4 o'clock in the morning, you get up at 4 o'clock in the morning. Don't ever. Don't ever live with that regret. Don't ever live with that one. Do whatever it is that God is unctioning you to do because you will not regret that. You will be blessed for that. And so I do want Pastor Dave, I think he's going to pray here and I'm going to head back there with my family. And I thank you so much and ask God to continue to pour out his blessings on your life.